Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. We're used to synchronous communication. You send a request to a service and you get a response. However, when you move to asynchronous communication, you often think of messages as fire and forget. You send a command to a queue and because it gets processed asynchronously, you don't know when it was actually processed or what the result was. But there is a solution. Let me explain how you can use the request and response pattern to reply to the sender when a message was processed. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. So let's compare and contrast synchronous versus asynchronous and how this is a problem, is that we're used to synchronous request response. We have service A that meet, needs to make a call to service B, and let's say this is done over an HTTP API or gRPC or something of that nature. We make that request. When service B needs to actually, underneath the hood, perform what it's doing, get data, perform some type of action, we're blocking service A. Service A is waiting, sitting there waiting for the response. Once service B is finished, it then returns our result, our response, to service A to let it know that actual request is complete. So as an example, this gets much more complicated and difficult when we're making these synchronous recalls to many different services. So as my example here, we have sales, warehouse, and billing. And when we place an order within our system, we first need to reach out to billing to actually create an invoice or charge our customer. So when we reach out to do that to billing, we're doing that synchronously so that once that request is returned to us, we know it was completed and let's say it was successful. From there, we make another synchronous call to the warehouse to tell it, okay, create your shipping label because we've created our order, we've billed our order, we've actually created the invoice, now we can request to actually ship this out. So we make that re synchronous request and our warehouse tells us, okay, great, I've completed um, creating your shipping label. So one of the issues here is temporal coupling and because we're dealing with many different services, we don't have a distributed transaction. If we made that call to billing and we're successfully charged or created an invoice for our customer, but then when we make that call to the warehouse, let's say the warehouse is unavailable or it times out, now we're left in an inconsistent state. One way to solve this is to remove that temporal coupling and we can do that with messaging. The problem therein lies is like I said, most times we're thinking of messaging as you send a message or a command to a queue and it's processed asynchronously and you don't actually know when it was actually processed or what the result was. But that's where request response comes in and you can apply that to asynchronous messaging. So this is basically what it looks like is you have your producer create its request, let's say a command, and it's sending that to a queue to your message broker. When you have your consumer pick up that message and it consumes that message and processes that message, and let's say, for example, the happy path here, it was successful. What it can do at that point is that original request has metadata from header information about who sent it. And it can use that information to then create a reply and push it to a separate queue that that producer is looking for. So then we can pass that to a separate queue that our pr producer, the actual sender of that original request can receive. So again, we're still temporally decoupled here. We're decoupled by messaging, but we can still reply back to the original sender when that original request was processed. So to jump back to my example of sales, warehouse, and billing, how this works in an asynchronous request response is that sales, once an order is actually created, it's gonna publish an order placed event to a message broker. On the same side, we have an orchestrator that's gonna basically kick off this long running process. So it receives that order placed event. And now what it's gonna do, it's gonna send a command, a message to billing to actually bill our order. So it's gonna do that and asynchronously, billing's gonna pick that up. When it actually does process it and completes it, it's gonna reply. It's gonna send a reply back to our message broker, which our orchestrator will pick up. So that order build event is a message that we're replying with back to our orchestrator. This isn't a message that's going to a topic that others can consume. This is a reply specific to the sender, which was the orchestrator. From then, when we consume that order build event in the orchestrator, that reply, we can now send our message to create the shipping label to the warehouse. And the same thing here, once that actually is processed by the warehouse, it can reply with a shipping label created message 
that is gonna be a reply specifically for our orchestrator so it can handle. So now maybe it marks our order as being ready to ship and changing its status. I wanna say thank you to all my developer level members on YouTube and Patreon. They'll get access to all the source code I'm about to show, as well as a private Discord server. If you're interested in joining, check out the links in the description. So to illustrate this in code, I'm using end service bus, and this is exactly how my diagram was. I have billing, sales, and shipping. And what we're looking at right now is my, in sales, is the place order controller. So this ASP.NET Core, where I'm gonna be accepting an HTTP request, and I'm gonna be creating a new command, place order, that I'm gonna be sending to a queue. Asynchronously, I have a separate handler for it that's gonna accept that place order message, that command. And just to mock it out here, we just have creating a database record. But then what we're doing is we're publishing the order placed event. And that's what really kicks everything off. So from there, I have a end service bus saga that's gonna consume that order placed event. And that's what's gonna kick everything off here. So what happens is once the order placed event is consumed uh, in our kind of our saga, our orchestrator, it's the one that's gonna send the bill order command. And that's gonna be handled by billing. And again, I have breakpoints here. I'll step through this and you'll see. So once billing picks that up, it's gonna reply with an order build uh, message that is only gonna be consumed by this orchestrator. So at this point, this is this handler that's gonna handle that order build message, which is our reply. And from there, we can then send the command to create shipping label that will be handled in our shipping boundary. And the same type of thing, once it's processed, it's going to then reply with the shipping label created message, which we'll handle here. And now we're gonna send another command, which is gonna be handled internally in sales to mark our order as uh, ready to ship. All right, so I have everything running, debugging. I'm just going to send a request in Postman that's gonna hit this controller route. There it is. So here I'm sending our place order. And you can see when I run the, this, because this is asynchronous, I was immediately getting the breakpoint in ASP.NET Core of our no content because we're not waiting. We're just sending that message to a queue. So I can jump back over to the worker here. So now what we've done is we're consuming that place order uh, command. We've created our record and now we're publishing the order placed event. So I'm gonna step over this. Now we can see we're in our actual consumer here for our orchestrator, our end service, service bus saga. And now we're gonna send our bill order command and this is gonna be handled by billing. So I have another breakpoint here and now we're in our billing side. And again, we're still completely asynchronous. Something that's completely like uh, we have a separate worker that's handling this. Now for our bill order, we would do some type of work here related to our creating our invoice or charging our customer. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna reply. So we're replying with our order build. And you can see now we hit back asynchronously with messaging complete, completely temporally decoupled. We're handling that order build. We have now we're gonna send create shipping label. We're hitting our shipping side and we're consuming that message. We do some work, whatever that may be. Again, we reply, we go back to our orchestrator, then service bus saga, and we create our ready to ship order. And now we're complete. Not all messaging needs to be fire and forget. You can leverage the request and response pattern in an asynchronous environment. This allows you to know and tell the sender, reply to them, to when you actually process a message and what the result is. This is really beneficial when you have a long running business process where you can respond back to the sender to say, here's the result, I processed the message so that they can perform further actions. One thing to note is that you're only gonna reply when you're consuming a command from a queue. This isn't really applicable when you're talking about events in publish subscribe. When you have a command, the sender knows that there's a consumer for it and that the consumer can reply back because the sender is expecting it. With publish subscribe, when you publish an event to a topic, there may be zero, one, or many different subscribers, and the publisher does not know that at all. So again, this kind of request response pattern really only applies when we're talking about commands in a queue. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment, and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.